Are you looking for the best and easiest way to set up an Airbeam tent? Well, I'm going to show you. Here we have the crew of core and the crew of family inside. I'm going to rewind to the start and show you how we set up the tents. Now, even though these are two specific types of tents, the same theories, the same principles really apply to all air tents or all air beam tents more specifically. So come with me and I'll take you through the steps. Before we do anything, I like to have a look around the ground, make sure that there's no stones, uh, rocks, twigs, branches, that kind of stuff that could protrude through the, the, the floor because for two reasons primarily. Number one, it could actually puncture the floor of the tent and number two, it tends to make for a very uncomfortable night's sleep. So I think we're pretty okay here. Roots are another thing um, and it, it looks pretty good around here. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead now and put down the footprint first and again the footprint is just another floor. It's another layer between you and the tent. It gives you an extra layer of waterproofing and the footprint should always be a little bit smaller than the tent. It shouldn't come outside the floor of the, or the ground of the tent, the ground sheet of the tent, just because that'll encourage pooling of water between the floor and the footprint. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put down the footprint, peg it out, and then we'll go and we'll start, um, we'll start putting up the tent after that. Okay, so now the footprint is down and staked out. Next thing is, put the core on. So we're gonna pop the tent on. We're gonna face the door this way because that's the way we want to orientate it. I'm a big fan of um, Airbeam tents. And one of the main reasons is it's a one person setup. Much easier, you're not fighting with poles and that kind of stuff. Now there are horses for courses, of course. But if you want an easy one person setup, for me, Airbeam um, is the way to go. They do tend to be a little bit heavier, sometimes a little bit bulkier. So it's, I guess it's weighing off the benefits that you're looking for in your tent. But if you want the ease of putting it up, and for, especially for one person, Airbeam. Okay, so the next thing is to find the valves, and that's where you inflate and deflate the tent, or the air poles in the tent. This particular crew core has three valves. So there's one for the front, and then there's one uh, for each of the air beams that, that crisscross. Different tents will have a different number of valves. Just find, find how many inflation points you need to use depending on the tent you're using. So the first thing I like to do is put a little bit of air into it so it takes some shape. Then we can orient it properly on the footprint and then we can stake it out and finish the inflation after that. Especially the wind is picking up here a little bit so we want to get it staked down first before it takes off with us. Staking time, the wind is picking up. Okay, so I'm gonna finish the inflation now. Like I said, the four corners are staked out. So the next thing is to finish inflating the poles um, and then we'll do our guy lines and we also obviously have to inflate the porch pole at the front. So in all of crew tents, you'll find the guy lines in these little pockets. Um, other brands may have them elsewhere, but I'm going to now, like I mentioned, guy the tent out fully. And anybody who's seen me put up tents before knows I'm obsessive about making sure you guy out the tent properly. These guy lines, you can adjust the tension here with this little toggle. So if you want to tighten it afterwards, we can do that. Or if you want to change the distance, generally we keep, try and keep it pretty long, just because the better angle, the more power or the more secure it's going to be. Another thing to remember, make sure the doors are closed before you go going out the tent. And that's regardless whether it's air beam or a rigid beam, doesn't matter. Have the doors closed, guy it out, then you know it's nicely, nicely finished. Now we have the outside set up, so the next step is to go inside. And we're going to open up the doors, let air, plenty of air in and circulate inside while we put up the secret sauce the insulated inner colour. In this case, it's the family that's sized for the core. Make sure we sleep easy. This tent goes up with just one valve. There is a, an air escape on the other side. All of these beams, any air beam product, will have a recommended PSI. For these, it's seven, and the pumps will give a gauge as well, but there's a little escape on the other side just in case you're over pumping it. So 
So this particular colour has a door on both sides, so you could orientate it this way or turn it to 90 degrees depending on the tent you're putting it into, etc. And, and what suits you basically. So I'm just going to go open up this door, I'm going to leave it like this for now, open up this door. It's done, it's pumped, it's up, it's ready to go. So there you have it, two air beam tents up in the blink of an eye, well, nearly. Um, so look, there are pros and cons, to be fair, rigid frame tents versus air, air tents or air beam tents. We deal with that, those pros and cons in another video. We'll stick the link up here somewhere. Um, so shoot through to that, have a look. And, and if you have any questions at all, stick them in the comments of this video or the other video. And we, we do monitor them regularly, so we'll get back to them, okay? Theoretically, this is the part I'd go in and take a nap or chill out, theoretically. Um, so back to work, but remember, sleep easy, live wild. <laughs>